Hi everybody and welcome back to the Going For It Sim Studio. When I started this challenge at the end of last winter, to learn golf in one year only on an indoor golf simulator and then attempt to break 80 outside for my first ever round, I had a very specific path in mind and the reasons behind that was because I wanted to take an average approach. What a normal person would do in a similar situation that I am in. Full-time job, family, trying to maintain some sort of fitness level and being able to learn the game at a decent pace. Now, my challenge is obviously very lofty. I'm trying to do something that less than 2% of golfers do, but I still wanted to make every mistake that normal folks would make and learn from that process so that I could teach off of experience because I am not a golf instructor. But what I can say is that I started with zero experience about the golf swing and what I have learned, I can take that experience and pass it on to you so that you can begin your journey or continue your journey a little bit quicker, maybe more efficient, and have a heck of a lot more fun. So the one thing that we're gonna talk about today that sticks out more than others, this is the number one hack for beginners and newer golfers, and that is what we call GPS. That is grip, posture, and set up. Let me explain. All right, so I wanna preface this just one more time. I'm not a golf instructor. I'm not trying to be a golf instructor and I am in no way certified to provide any sort of golf instruction. But what I can do is take the experiences that I have learned from learning golf at an incredibly rapid pace to try to break 80 in one year and pass on that experience to new, newer, and somewhat new golfers so that you can learn and get a path towards that swing and the lower score that you are looking for from my experience. Now, there's a lot out there, right? Everybody, all of you, you've been on the internet, you're on YouTube now, you've seen Golf Digest, Golf Magazine, it is instructional chaos. But there's something for everybody on there. And as you watch a lot of those videos and you find the instructors that you like to follow, as your golf swing progresses, certain things will click and you'll be like, oh, now I need to learn that. I understand that now. But how do we start that? How do we keep from getting overwhelmed? Well, we build a foundation, right? Almost everything that we do in life has some sort of foundation. We learned how to hold a pencil. We learned the alphabet so that we could read and write. When you get in your vehicle, your seat, steering wheel, and mirrors have to be in a, the right position for you personally so that you can safely operate that vehicle and operate it efficiently, right? Get into a rental car. It's the weirdest thing, right? Everything's out of whack. The brakes feel weird. The gas pedal feels weird. The buttons are somewhere else. It's because we're not familiar. So how do we keep that from happening in golf? GPS is what we call it. It's grip, posture, and setup. With those three things, we build a true foundation of the golf swing so that everything else that you're gonna learn down the line works a heck of a lot better. When your grip is where it should be, if your posture is where it should be and your setup is where it should be, everything else in the golf swing works better. Your wrists work better, your shoulders work better, your upper T-spine moves better, your spine angle is in the right spot, Rotation is all gonna line up better. Therefore, when you come back to the golf ball, you're gonna get more consistent, accurate strikes. I don't know why this is overlooked so, so often. A lot of people I talk to have their ideas. When I started golf, everybody gave me their idea of how to hold a golf club, uh, how to stand over it, or how to um, set up at a dress, right? So what did I learn that I can pass on to all of you? That is simply get a coach just once. Whether you're brand new and you've never picked up a golf club, you've played golf for a little while, or you've played golf for a few years and for some reason stuff's just not working. Find a coach on Skillist or find a PGA professional near you and get an actual lesson. I know it's not cheap. I totally understand it, but this is a investment in you that's gonna make your golf swing work for you a heck of a lot more in the future. I just listened to people, I jumped on YouTube, I got overwhelmed, and I didn't actually see Alex Moore on Skillist until 
it was about three months in, and I wish I would have done this a heck of a lot sooner. Because what I went to him for was, hey, Alex, I want to fix my slice. Probably 99% of you out there have that exact same question that they want to do. I want to show up to somebody. I want to get a rapid response on how to fix my slice so I can go outside and play golf. And Alex said, we need to fix your grip, your posture, and your setup. And he took me to school for a few weeks, actually. And he sent me follow-up videos, photos, and he explained the kinematics and all of it. And that's why it's important to see somebody. For my grip, for your grip, there are so many ways that you'll look online, you'll see photos, you'll see videos. How do you hold a golf club? A lot of it depends on your flexibility. It depends on the kinematics of your own body. And that's why it's important to see somebody. And it kind of boils down to where are the pressure points on your hands? right? If you think about it simple, if you hold the golf club this way, the pressure points are where you feel your hands, what pads of your fingers on your palm, what's actually in contact with that golf club. You got to be able to know that because that's going to put the club in your hand the correct way. Lining your club up in your fingers, not in your palm, right? You're going to learn that. Where should your thumb be? What part of your thumb should be contacting that club? Same with your trail hand. Where should that be? There are just so many different places to put it there. Where should your club face be? What does an aligned club face look like? All that is vital to your grip. And talking to somebody, being able to instruct that for you, whether you're in person or online, is going to just create a wonderful start to your swing. Being at your posture, right? Your posture, when you stand up and you're just talking to somebody, right? If you're like this, I mean, that's not good posture, right? If, you, if you're seated and you're hunched over, you know, we're taught to put our shoulders back and stand up straight, you know, have the, the right human posture. It's no different in a golf swing. You know, if you have your grip correct, your club is square, your club face, you're able to lean over, your arms are hanging down, and there's your posture, okay? You're not bent into knees like this. You're not standing with your knees locked, standing straight up. There's just so many movements, right? How do you know what feels right? That's what a professional is gonna be able to get you. So instead of watching me do it or have somebody else talk to you about it, they put you in that position so that, that muscle memory starts. And then you get to work on your setup, right? So now we have our grip. We've got our posture. But where do we put our feet? Where's the ball go? Guarantee you if you jump online, you're gonna see this really cool chart that says, depending on what iron you have, what club you're playing with, here's where the ball should be. You better be pretty good with your alignment stick to be able to dial that in, right? That's a great theory for a lot of people. It's been around for a long, long time. For me, I like to have my ball off the left ear. It's something that Alex taught me and it keeps things consistent for me. So it doesn't matter where you have it. Everybody that'll come over will tell you, oh, your ball needs to be here, your ball needs to be there. Find somebody you can trust, a good professional, somebody certified, right? Again, on Skillist or a PGA professional. Find a theory that goes well with you, something that creates consistency and follow that ball positioning. Maybe you do follow that chart and that's the way your brain works. That's what you should do. Maybe it's easier for you just to have that ball on the left ear for almost all your clubs except the longer ones and then we move that as it needs to be, right? You're not going to hit a driver with the ball at your left ear. But that's basic ball setup that an instructor is going to be able to tell you that's going to get you on the right path. What about your feet, right? My advice, not instruction, would be if you're just starting, just keep your feet in line with the target. Don't keep them straight, right? Duck a little bit. Um, one of the, you know, one tip that I got that was actually really good was duck crazy and just see what it feels like and then find a good path to where you want to do that. You don't want your feet to be perfectly square. When you open up your feet, it opens up your hips. It allows for the movement that you're looking for in your hips to get the proper golf swing. Now for me, because I struggle to get it into out path, I actually kick my right foot back a little bit. Um, which is more of a draw stance. If you're going to try to hit a draw, you know, if you want a shot shape, you eventually learn that. 
And that allows me to get the in to out path that I'm looking for, but that's for me. You know, don't do anything crazy with your feet until you know exactly what's going on with your golf swing. Just start with them even. So now you have your GPS. You now have your, your grip, posture, and setup dialed. Now everything else in your journey is going to go a lot smoother. After working with Alex for a few months, I decided and, you know, and mentioned to Alex, say, hey, how about I go see somebody local and get an in-person lesson to get some, a few of my foundational skills really kind of bed in. And I went and saw Jeff Ritter out at Pronghorn. And the first thing he does, I said, hey, go ahead, some balls. Let me just see what you got going on. And he walks up and he says, your grip, your posture, and your setup is wonderful. That felt great because here's what it allowed. The money I was paying Jeff, I want to be able to progress my swing. I don't want to have to go back and learn the same stuff again. And we were able to go straight into the technique of the golf swing. Now he did have a grip change. He wanted me to make my trail hand a little bit stronger. And there was a reason behind that. And so we were able to move on and then immediately start working on my swing technique. And that is what changed everything else for me. So if I could go back and do this all over again, what's the one thing I would do straight away? I would get a professional to teach me grip posture setup. Uh, I still like the way I did it to where I was able to learn that. And I don't think you need to dive right into full swing lessons straight away. If your grip posture setup is the way it should be, you're going to be able to have a decent foundation to start going outside and playing golf and having a golf swing in the right direction. Please like, follow, and subscribe. I'm gonna do a lot more of these. Um, I really enjoy what I've experienced and what I can tell you so that you can not have to experience those. Speed your process up, or maybe just get on a direction that gets you towards the swing and enjoying the game of golf like you initially intended when you got into the game. Until then, go work on that GPS.